Hi, I'm Laura Avery, Santa Monica Farmer's Market Supervisor, and welcome to Cooking with the Farmer's Market, where we show you how to prepare delicious, healthful meals using fresh farmer's market produce. When you shop at a farmer's market and bring your own bag, you support California family farms and reduce storage and shipping costs because most of the produce is picked and brought to the market within 24 hours. Joining me in the kitchen today are Mark Cannon and Elliot Rubin, co-owners of The Curious Palette, a local restaurant with two locations, one in Mar Vista and one in Santa Monica Place, dedicated to cooking creatively with fresh local ingredients. Mark and Elliot are going to show us how to make a market-inspired lasagna that can be adapted to any season. Welcome, Mark and Elliot. Hello there. Hi Hello. there. So here we have market ingredients and um, boiling pot. And what are we? How do we start? We're doing a deconstructed lasagna. It's going to be pea and prosciutto and a four cheese sauce. So we're going to start with the uh, cheese right now. We're literally just going to um, melt the cheese, which is a Havarti cheese, cheddar. Blue cheese and goat cheese right into that. Now, is this something that's your kind of own take on? It's four cheese cheeses and, and cream. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. not overly. I mean, this lasagna, I suppose, is my own take. I haven't yeah. seen anywhere else. Gonna Whole. F that's the whipping bit. cream. That is the real deal. Yeah, that's right. Heavy, Actual heavy, mm -hmm. cream. Don't be afraid of cream, people. So we're gonna do that. Moderation is the guide. <laughs> we're gonna be assembling <laughs> a little bit of cream. lasagna right at the last second. Now um, you didn't measure how much. Do you, I know you're doing this by sight. You're yeah, a chef. Yeah, right. What about us? Um, so it, you, you want just enough cream for the cheese to melt okay. into it, basically. All right. uh, next thing we're going to do is make a uh, mushroom ragu to go with it. And a and ragu basically is what? Ragu is a, a, we've debated this before, some people think meat is in it, but it really is just a long cooked sauce. Okay, using any combination of meat, vegetables, okay. Yeah, and this one is, is, is just mushrooms, and a bunch of different mushrooms, which we picked up, most of them, at Clearwater uh, Farms. And um, yeah. that's um, why over there we have a porcini mushroom and a morel mushroom. Maybe Elliot can pick them up. Elliot is There's the one who morel. spends more time shopping, it seems to me. And then Mark is kind of the well, kitchen, you can't be everywhere at the the same kitchen time. guy. We're right. trying to make a showing over there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> We're putting Cipollini onions in, by the way, just so we get this going. And then now, Cipollini the are those beautiful little yeah. flat onions. Um, and a little butter right there. A lot of people right can cook them whole or braise them or roast them. And, and they're just, we're just they're beautiful. Mince up some butter. Like now that is a great way. Now instead of just chopping it in tiny little pieces, okay. Yeah, even Julia Child used to say throw a little salt in and it really? will help it grab the uh, cutting board. As yeah, you don't want your garlic or your onion flying off the table. Mine always does. That's because I don't do that. Smash it first. So you don't believe in using a garlic press? Oh no. no I don't have Why one. not? <laughs> yeah, the more things it's to wash. It's just hard to clean. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. This is actually probably faster in the end, if you count the uh, cleaning time. Yeah, that seems like a very thorough job of mincing that garlic yeah. to me, yeah. So then we're going to put the mushrooms in. These now the mushrooms, what we have now, we have, you know, clear water like you mentioned, and he has seasonal, he's got the wild mushrooms, which are in drastically short supply this year because of the drought. Absolutely. Uh, now you have over there, I can't help but noticing, Elliot, you really splurged, you got a whole porcini. That's right. Let's show that. That is like the classic little Walt Disney mushroom there that everybody thinks of when they it's think of a the mushroom. It's not the cheapest one either. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not the cheapest. <laughs> so how much are these? They're going by the ounce, uh, correct? You know, we buy them by the pound over there, and oh. he's got them at about 36, I think, for the porcini. A pound? Yeah, I think oh, so. Sounds like a bargain Both of them were about that. I forget exactly. And, and you don't need a lot. They're light. And don't forget, you don't actually need to use these. You could use any old mushroom. It's just, uh, you know, adjust to your budget. Well, let's, have you got one of those whole morels there? And morels this is the season. Wonderful. They're like little sponges. What do they take? What, what is the deal with their flavor? Why are they so desired? They have a wonderful earthy taste and they soak up uh, a lot of juices in your sauces. Now, is there a lot of cleaning to those? Because they have a lot of little brush, brush them off. Oh, really? Oh, really? You really don't, don't want to wash. Generally don't want to put water. You're going to bring in too much water into your cooking. Okay. okay. So right now we have the garlic, the onion. The mushrooms, a little salt. And <coughs> butter. You use no olive oil. Yeah, this, this is a butter This thing. is just butter. Okay. Why is that? Flavor? Yeah, it helps to also emulsify the sauce slightly. You know. Oh, okay. So, and, and the flavor is good, too. Okay. Last thing we're going to do is put in a little red wine. Any, is this the stuff that you didn't want to drink or got left out too long? Exactly. It's not the top <laughs> shelf, not the top <laughs> shelf stuff. It was the top it shelf. Was. Oh, it, it was. was. <laughs> burgundy. Oh. <laughs> just got lost somewhere. <laughs> okay. So then we're going to put a, let's see, a top And that's just cheese. to what, moisten? Um, yeah, it gives a little flavor. And, and but it your proportions, again, I mean, for those of us who are oh, a little more. exactly. Yeah. Just a splash, as okay. they say. All right. And then we're going to cook that. Now, um, we For how long? And I see you covered both. It's going to take about 45 minutes. 
45? Yeah. Four you want to go? Five. No, 45. You 45. Want, oh, for and, the ragu. And you yes. want to go to a really low temperature. Okay. And if you start seeing it be too dry, just add a little uh, wine? liquid, wine. <laughs> you could add a little chicken stock, too. Okay, water? Uh, and oh, water. Is that yes. Is that you water, could, too? You can do water. All now right. Now, what we're going to do is move this over here and put our finished ragu right there. Oh, look at that. Now, when you say caramelized, now those onions, what is that? To that's speed it up, a, that's a good point. Yeah. That, to speed it up, normally I brown the onions first and then add the mushrooms afterwards. Mm. So we would have added the onions and the garlic, let them brown, and then add in your mushrooms and the red wine. And it's important not to let anything burn first because it's all a slow, it's, a low, it's, it's not a low about heat. getting anything yeah. brown, it's just about mm -hmm. melting them, yeah. basically. So. Okay. Uh, <coughs> That will be cooking. The cheese uh, is melting now. Now, Elliot, when you, okay, you go to the market, you make the rounds, you go to more than one of our markets a week. That's right. Everything here on the table is pretty much from the market, right? That's right. So we can get just about everything we need in Southern California in the local farmer's market. It's great. Yeah, something I love about Curious Palette is a lot of the farmers are named with the recipe, with the menu item. And so, like, I'm sure you could right now, Elliot, you yes. know, no stress, you could tell us sure. probably most of the farmers' names where you got these. So the peas, those are so beautiful. Yeah, we picked these up at the Wednesday market, which was just yesterday, and these are from Tutti Frutti. We took a whole mm. case of peas. Uh, they're wonderful. It's a very seasonal thing, so we take full advantage. They're sweet like candy. They really are. People actually think that we add sugar to our food sometimes <laughs> when they eat the soup made with our peas, but no. Ugh. The peas, you, you want to run them from the farm to the kitchen. And they're not starchy. They don't have that Absolutely. awful bland starchy. They are sweet. Even they That's will right. get there, though, so eat them fast. And it's a it size converts. thing, too. Yeah. I notice these are fairly small. Yeah, you'll yeah. see that they're nice and green. Yes. You won't get a lot of the yellowing on it. That's right. one pea is right. not picking them too late. The other is not letting them sit around outside the refrigerator for too long. Right. So if you can eat them within a couple of days, that's great. Do you? But you refrigerate. You we refrigerate you to, all yeah. our vegetables. Except we except, tomatoes, we, except uh, obviously Never those that put a tomato. onions, uh, potatoes. We don't right. the classics that you right. don't refrigerate. Before I put these in the oven, you might want to just uh, these are two other products. This yes. is from Gloria. And these that are was zucchinis. that is zucchini. It looks yeah. like it's already been. I have a. Th this is going to go on top of lasagna, mm. and this is uh, grated pecorino. Mm. These have already this been pre-roasted in the interest of time, but we're going to heat them back up. These are uh, baby red uh, carrots, which from Tutti Frutti, Tutti Frutti, the purple carrots. Not peeled. No. You don't. You no. don't need no, to peel just them. Wash they're, well, they're young carrots. Brush. I tell you what, so I don't yeah. even right. peel mature carrots anymore at oh, my house. Oh, yeah. Except you know, except when my kids are going to eat them. Yeah, yeah. The beauty is with Tutti Frutti, of course, they're organic, so we feel very comfortable doing it that way. So I'm just going to put these in the oven, and we're just looking to create a little gratin on top. And, and what kind of cheese? Oh, pecorino, That's like pecorino. a grated. Yeah. Oh, so that looks, all looks here. so good. And I see and some And we have some beautiful asparagus. We're really in love with the Life's a Choke asparagus. They have right. wonderful artichokes as well. And we pick up these, and Mark uh, likes to point out that the larger ones are actually more flavorful. Well, you know what ones. I found out, and I just found this here, the jumbo, everybody thinks those are the old ones. Those are actually, like you said, the more flavorful, the right. younger ones. The little pencil ones are the ones that are a little bit That's older. That's right. Mark was explaining yesterday yeah. that the uh, or original, the initial growth is the large one in the right. center, and then the... Uh, then they sprout out with smaller yeah, ones later in the season. Yeah, that's counterintuitive that the first ones available are the big ones because they come right up the middle. Right. And then as the season yes. goes on, the smaller ones. Right, right. So this is this is prime, and they still have them, the jumbo. Th yeah, these aren't large. even, these would be medium. I mean, yeah. the jumbos are ridiculous. Now, <laughs> I mean, well, just some so fat. people like to, if it's a jumbo, they will peel it. But uh, Well, uh, maybe the ends, but you don't need to go This is what I do. Far. I peel the end. Okay. But the last two inches. Uh -huh. And maybe cut off the inside is still edible. Oh, yes. And then cut off the last quarter inch. Okay. You can pretty much feel where it's not working anymore. Yeah. To Could soak them in water um, if they're going to keep them in the yeah. fridge very long. They keep yeah. them vertical. Yes. Put the stems in and the water. And also, you can tell if the little top starts to open up or get a little, then, then you it's know it's, it's going to flower and then you don't want it anymore. You want to go quickly. That's right. So, and by the way, this is going to be a salad that's going to go with it. We have some butter lettuce. Oh. These um, asparagus that we're talking about are from Life's a Choke. Yeah, they're, they're, they're able to grow pretty much asparagus almost all year round. And we artichokes. Have actually now, they have wonderful these artichokes. These are pickled carrots. We just shred them and put Now, you do that all we right do there it all, in the yeah, store. Yeah, and these are pickled red onions. Pickled, oh, and so tasty. These here from Coleman are French breakfast radishes. Now those, those, are the, those are the ones that have the little white and red. They're so cute and they're yep. the ones French like to eat with exactly. butter and With bread just a little bit of butter yeah. and salt and have them, uh, maybe not for breakfast, but uh, I believe <laughs> they also call them breakfast radishes. <laughs> but they, the red kind of fades away. Now what do you put in there, vinegar? 
I made a dressing already, which I have here. No, in the to pickle the. Oh, oh yeah, the pickle usually, yeah. General, I, I know you hate these uh, precise measurements. But <laughs> I know I don't liberally like salt. Yeah. <laughs> and it, then so and then I go half vinegar, half water. Okay. We then, like to use apple cider vinegar. Then, then you apple cider vinegar, and then but you can use whatever vinegar you like, and then sure. you can oh, also start. But a white vinegar, you don't want to use like a well, no apple cider. Oh, apple any cider kind. is pretty light complected. Mm, okay. You, you could even you know depending on if it's a red onion, you could use a redder um, uh, vinegar. It's uh, you, you just don't want to use a colored vinegar if it's going to give you a color you don't want. Uh, and then it's half and half. Refrigerate it then? And stick yeah, in the fridge I keep, I keep them while? in the fridge. Okay. They'll, they'll stay there for months. And when are they actually pickled? How long? Well, well, th so those I made last night, but um, th they can go f again for months. This Just isn't overnight. a fermenting yeah, pickling. This is a yeah. vinegar pickling. Oh, okay. okay. So we don't so need warmth. We don't. We're not making sauerkraut. Oh, okay. And and then you always have to keep it in the fridge. You can't just then stick it in the cupboard that because wow. it hasn't been hot water canned and all that. So, yeah, that stays in the fridge. Mm -hmm. Right. It's very convenient. You can uh, actually reuse the juices and throw so in other I, things. So I onions. do this. I'm going to try a bite of this pickled radish. Very important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Should be pretty light because it was just last mm. night. So. It's a mild radish anyway, you yeah. know? Yeah. So uh, the dressing. Mm. Oh, that's so good. This yogurt. We, uh, what is, did we figure out the name of it? It's oh, a gosh, Greek we place downtown that makes it. It's the best yogurt. It's yeah, right. it's, it's uh, Greek yogurt. There's Greek yogurt Papa everywhere something. now. It's a big thing. Yeah. So, but this is the this best? Is the, it, I we don't like know, it. It's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> it's not very acidic, which uh -huh. uh, we find very nice. Okay. Now, so what we got in here we'll is yogurt and mustard and um, maybe two parts if, uh, yogurt to one part mustard and then uh, one part uh, roasted garlic, so mm. roasted and pureed, and then uh, salt, mm. and also mm -hmm. some uh, rice wine vinegar, um, probably about uh, half a part. Okay. Going on that. Um, and it looks like a brown mustard, like a... It's a Dijon. Dijon, okay. Yep. Oh, and nice. Not that French is not that bright yellow stuff. No, we prefer <laughs> the not Dijon. Not so much, yeah. <laughs> so we'll just put that in Oh, there. that looks like a great dressing. Um, and so the primary ingredient is yogurt and, and a little bit of mustard. Yogurt and mustard mm. and honey. I'm sorry, I forgot oh, to tell you about honey. the honey. Yeah, there's a little. And you can honey. find some wonderful raw honey. honeys at the farmers market. Absolutely. We get yeah. it at, on the Pico market. Now the raw honey, it will crystallize, which is a good thing. Sure. Because it has never been heated because it's raw, so That's people don't need to worry. You just what, stick you it just in some Just put it back in warm water, water and, and it'll re-liquefy. And right. uh, there's actually a temperature zone where oh, honey will sweet. crystallize. Yeah. It's too high or too low. And, but you you're get happy right to see right it spot. crystallize because then you know it's natural. Actually, all yeah. honeys will crystallize over oh, they time. Will. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so the so okay so the zucchini and the asparagus and the carrots were pre-roasted yeah, in an we, oven before we pre you then. The asparagus, okay. Yeah. All right. Now, so it's a little um, bit of prep there. So everything is in here now. That's mm -hmm. ready to come when we uh, plate. The last thing we have here is um, a an optional item if you don't want meat. You don't have to have it, but we like. Because <laughs> we, because we. This is prosciutto americano. It's from La Quercia in mm -hmm. Iowa. It's a Berkshire pig, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's right up there with Italian prosciutto. Oh. It's, it's delicious. So it melts. It's, it's Anything fantastic. the Italians do, we can do. Let's talk about that olive oil, for example. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Just uh, that's what uh, that's what we uh, we pour that over the zucchinis and the and the asparagus. This Adams all olives, they are a fifth generation olive growing family and then they got into this organic racket you know <laughs> just not that long ago so they mm -hmm. have a whole line of organic sort of proprietary organic olives and then they do their regular beautiful and it's so fruity and it's so seasonal when and you talk you can about find them at the farmers market yes. he's uh, at the pico market at the wednesday market the right. saturday market right get your olives uh, seasonally it's fresh olives, olives as well Black olives are wonderful. And they have those wonderful fresh, uh, the fresh green olives that yeah, are literally, I think, those. just cured in salt and water. And that they're like. our chop salad. Oh, yeah. I've, uh, yeah. We've converted a lot of people that hated olives into olive oh. lovers when they ate those. And you can just eat those because they're not that salty. And they're not very you salty, exactly. You can literally exactly. eat a pint, which I have done on many occasions. They're almost fruity, I would in call one, them. Yes, exactly. We uh, once tried to make olives. and uh, It was a two year project. With, who do we get the olives from? I we got them from. Two years. We didn't use lye. You know, lye is the salt cure, right? Yeah, it was a salt cure. We change the water just like the Italians do, although they throw a bag in the river. <laughs> we change the water every day, and that took about two or three months. And then after that, How about a year and a half before they turned into <laughs> eat edible olives. We decided to farm that out to um, Adam. Alex at Adams Ranch. Yeah, yeah. right, right. <laughs> I don't right. think they were the finest effort that we ever put in. But yeah, it's not the easy finest actually. not. <laughs> yeah, right. Takes a lot of time. Yeah. Well, everybody and and the farmers do bring in the olives, and they bring them in. Uh, they start out being green, and then they kind of go to a little red, and then they go black. black but yes. they keep bringing, they keep picking them, and then mm -hmm. people, all, well, home cooks love to try. You know, I don't know how many succeed, but they do try. Now, what is the dill for? Where did that go? I, I uh, sprinkled it on top of the salad. Oh, here, so just as a, as a Just before we plate it, yeah. I'll just 
toss mm. it all together. And dill is yeah. wonderful. You nice. mix it with yogurt. You have a lot of uses for dill, and you can get that at Tamai Farms. Our friend Gloria sells uh, dill. S some people would use it like a fennel top, like all those huge fennel. That's just not not the same. It just doesn't have that punch. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. I would agree. Yeah. Well, I don't so think so. So what we're going to do here is um, um, now that he's done them all, this will be the this is the last component. Yeah, it's that's uh, fun for the kids. Well, the kids uh, <laughs> shelling the piece. No, so they, they taste great, obviously they're raw. They're so good. They're delicious. They're like candy. Yeah. But they I, I do find that just just a minute in the water, even somehow. I don't know, it does a little bit of texture, I think. Mm. Mm. Just gives it the right texture. It takes away okay. a little bit of the green taste, maybe. Yeah, I, I, I do find that but it helps But they're so out. crunchy. They're, they're great, and it's the kind of vegetable really you want to bring it them straight for, in. Uh, 30 seconds, 40 seconds, that's it. So it's one of the last things we'll do after we assemble. You're going to put them in the pasta water, take them out, and then put the pasta in to well, kind of I have just add some I have vitamins. an extra water over mm. here for the peas, so we'll do them at the same time. The pasta. But sometimes it's good to cook the pasta in vegetable cooking water, yeah. so do you get some of that? Um, you nutritional could, you value do that? Yeah, you could do that. Um, mm -hmm. These are going to be in the water so okay. short a time, I don't think uh, it's going to matter. Now, just uh, before we uh, go to the break, we have um, the lasagna. Which now, you make this. Yeah, we make all our in pasta. In your store. Yeah. We, we Where, what kind of flour? Um, Durham and Semolina. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, then egg. And, uh, okay, because some pasta you can make without an egg. Of even. course. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. A lot of people do mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. egg. But, mm -hmm. uh, I so guess egg, flour, salt, that's it? Water. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And, um, do you have a sheeter? Do you do the thing with well, the machine? Yeah, that, oh, you can or use you a little hand cranker. We, used to, we, do, have a we used to do this, and it was ridiculous. So <laughs> we didn't do it. We stopped, and then we took over the bakery. And the bakery, yes. we got the sheeter for the croissant. Right. Now pasta became pasta. a reasonable proposition. Pasta. But nonetheless, you can do it at home with those cute little Italian machines. Again, you get the family, the kids to do it. <laughs> it's put a the real kids operation. To work. Make them work for their dinner. That's right. Or that's right. They'll eat more of it if they make it. So I'm just going to put, before we leave, I'm just going to put these in. Okay. Yep. And other than that, we're going to be ready to uh, eat this when we come back. And so. then we cook the pasta. Literally, we're going to cook that at the last minute. Yep. In so an amazingly short amount of time. Yeah. So oh, I think you so can. Uh, at home, you can substitute with the dry pasta, of course, if you don't want to go. You'll yeah. have to cook it a little longer. So you don't have to do all that pre boiling the noodles and putting them aside. Mm -hmm. You just, oh, this is great. Okay, great. Well, so when we come back, we'll do that. Okay, can't wait to do that. I want to see how long that takes. Riding a bicycle can seem like child's play but only if you're playing indoors. <laughs> Riding in the real street has real consequences. Play it safe. Ride by the rules. Cars and bikes need to play together. Okay, we're down to the last stage here, and you we're are gonna literally... Yeah, we're okay. going to take the peas out. We'll get those They're out. They're done. They cooked for about 45 seconds. Okay. Bring them over and here. What I'm interested in is literally the fresh pasta will right. cook in three minutes, more yeah, or less. So I'm just going to get those in. Usually, because when you make a lasagna, you got to boil the noodles, and you got to take them out, and it's a big hassle. This is just, everything is ready, and now we're just, just cooking assembling off the noodles. It this is the next so step. great. Are these going to drain in something? I'm just going to take them out with tongs. With tongs. Yeah. Okay. And these are big enough. You can just grab them. Yep. That's not too and hard. And one less thing to wash again. One less thing to wash. No colander to wash. It's always good. Yeah. And no wasting all that great cooking water. And then we have the yeah. uh, zucchini and carrots right mm. here. And these smell done. so divine. All this And roasted vegetables. Nothing like that. So good with the cheese on top of that, and I can't wait to see what we're doing with that prosciutto. That's just going to get layered in as well. Mm. So how do you know when these are done? Do they float mm, or something? Just feel them. You feel them with your yeah. bare hands? Yeah. Mm. Boiling hot noodles. Raw pasta, <laughs> one minute. That usually does it. Yeah, you can feel it. It's, it's really almost done. You can. You can't you just <laughs> see if it's <laughs> floppy? Want, or throw it against the refrigerator <laughs> doors? And then some people do. <laughs> I'm ready to touch that or not. I don't know what I'm feeling for, but. They look, they just get soft. Yeah. Yeah. They're and uh, you make this yourself yeah. in uh, flour, water, salt, yeah, and, and uh, a little egg. Laminator. Yeah, that's so great. But you can buy, if you're not going to do this at home, you can just go buy You can buy your fresh pasta or any dry fresh pasta. pasta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That would probably speed would, would along the process. Dry, even, you could even use dry pasta. Sure. sure. But does not? anything come in this shape? Can you get big square yeah, pieces sure. of pasta? Um, um, well, you would boxes. cook them and then cut them into shape oh, okay. if you buy the long ones. Oh, okay. I've well, seen some of the shorter ones. Yeah. Can't you but you'd wait till you cook them to cut them, obviously. Oh, yeah. okay. Otherwise, okay. you have a shattered mess. 
Yeah, but I've tried that. I've <laughs> tried trimming the ends off That's of tricky. hard pasta. That's like cutting it glass. Never, yeah, <laughs> cutting glass. Maybe with a glass cutter. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So. That just, this is so great, this ragu, because it really is low maintenance. It just cooks and cooks. It doesn't even matter how and long And make it too cooks. much, and you'll have extra for tomorrow to even throw better. on to another dish. Even better. So true. And this is such a great meal. It's got five kinds of mushrooms. It's got... How many? Anyway, I can't even count. And you can prepare it in advance and then assemble sure. it. the hen of the woods, right? Your favorite. Yeah, and the hen of the woods, which is that mountain mushroom, which is also pretty rare up there. You guys are going to share and I get my own? Is That's this how, how this is going to go? Yeah. Great. So, so I'm just taking them out. Now, in the winter, okay, so, uh, you know, we'd have different mushrooms. We might even have winter squash and not summer squash, you know, so. Well, well because they stored in the winter. They're can, all grown at the same time of year. You can put whatever you want in there, basically, is the, yeah. the idea. Yeah, well, I like the, uh, those nice red carrots. Um, you could do, you know, leeks. There's a Lee, lot. sure. People could. And, you know, and then if the morels aren't seasoned and you just want to go back to everyday mushrooms, there's plenty of everyday mushrooms. Unfortunately, the mar farmer's markets just don't have that many mushrooms. Um, okay. Pasta. We're not exactly in a mushroom growing part of the world. We're really not. For wild mushrooms, that is. Yeah. You got the white. Okay. You got the pasta, the ragu, mm -hmm. the peas, the We're cream. just going to layer it just like a lasagna. And you repeat. don't have to cook it. Yeah. Okay. And then the prosciutto and That's the roasted. That's going to go right in here. Oh, okay. Now, should I take some of you these out? Are they going to get overcooked nah, here? Well, we're moving pretty fast. We have another plate to put these in? Yeah, no, I got it. Don't worry. We'll get it. Oh, we're layering. That's yeah, right. we're going to layer. We'll have them out in a second. All right. You can turn it off, though, if you want to turn it off. <laughs> that I can do. Now, do you make these to order at the restaurant? Yeah. That's right. Well, <laughs> the ragu's done. The, uh, the cheese it's sauce is done. So you I mean, assemble. assemble. The pasta's yeah. cooked. You literally will the start the pasta made. when they place the order. Yeah. And, and the cheese sauce will just heat back up. And the ragu is already done. So. It's actually a fun adventure looking at our menu. There's quite a few different dishes on there. Be more fun adventure to watch you in the kitchen. Well, we have open when kitchen, so you can see you some do. of the I stuff going on. It's really great. We love sharing uh, recipes too. So. Oh, great! Well, we're going to share this one. This one's just so fantastic. And with the fresh peas, it's just it's great. Yeah, and, when, and especially when the kids are peeling them all for you. Oh yeah. You know, get that out of the way. As long as they don't eat all of them. Some of the farmers will actually sell you a bag of shelled peas. That's right. For don't forget they'll be a little older three usually. Con oh, right. So you won't get quite the freshness. And taste three times them the first. Cost. Right. Always taste the peas before you buy them. By right. the way, we do have a precise measurement on this. We do two ounces of prosciutto per. Which is a couple of those slices, which are very hard to peel off. Yeah. Yeah. Can I take these out and put them in here? I'm getting a little worried that they're going to get. Okay. Oh, we're Last still we're still here. layering. Oh, wow. Yep. Three layers of pasta. Three layers. Wow. It's a Dagwood lasagna. <laughs> I always make my lasagnas with three layers. Three layers? That's just yeah. a thing? Do so that do? water's not a problem, huh? Mm -hmm. And those you can do whatever you'd like. Okay, with let now. me get them out because <laughs> I'm not worried about them getting too, too something. All right. I, I just want to save them for later. That's my thing here. Okay. Those, from beginning to end, some stayed in twice as long as others, but it's still okay because it's a relatively short amount of time. Is that, would you say that's a fair yeah, I think assessment okay, yeah. from a non- All right, show? so why don't okay. you guys, if you want to start eating. Yay. Now, a dish like that, now that's at both of your restaurants? You can no, no, this? we don't do as much at the Marvis as much smaller kitchens. So oh, it is? Yeah. 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 And what are some other things? Are you doing, uh, what's the seasonal? I know the seasons are changing now. There's uh, right. peaches coming. Right. Yeah. We're going to be uh, The turkey placing, sandwich uh, is going to have jicama instead of uh, apple. Oh, right. So the apples are looking not so good right now. Go. No, I the agree. apples are ending pretty early for us. Yeah. The cold storage yeah. seem to be yeah. very successful this year. Now, this is a knife and fork situation here, right? Yeah. With this? Yeah. There you go. Okay, Ellie? So you guys right. each have your own fork. Yeah. Let me try the salad first just okay. because cause that looks so amazing. And this is a butter, a little butter, butter lettuce. Butter lettuce, yeah. yeah, that's not an iceberg. It's mm -hmm. a much healthier option. Yeah. Oh, really? Because it has. Oh, well, really? there's green. When I see oh. green, I know oh, oh, it's oh. going to be a little bit yeah. well, uh, it's more interesting. You're going for the crunchy stuff. And the flavor, mm. sure. And the little pickles? Mm hmm. Mm. We love pickling things. Great way to preserve things. Use apple cider vinegar. Seems like a lot of people, and I know this goes on some of your sandwiches too, these pickled onions. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Everything in the kitchen is used on many And things, this is so. something else. It's so easy to do at home with the water, the vinegar. The salt. Yep. And oh, you can pickling? Pickle? Yeah, you should pickle all sorts of things in your house. Can you pickle um, carrots? Zucchini? Uh, little baby zucchinis or something? Mm. 
Go ahead, you better get to that lasagna if you want to, or else we're going to take it away from you. Yeah, I know. You don't think I can eat all this? Now it's really going to be hard to get all Make sure you get the good mushrooms. Yeah, I know. I'm looking around for those porcini. You got one right there on that Oh, okay, okay. Okay, great. Yes. Prosciutto. I can just see Mark and Elliot every time they serve one of these, peeking out of the kitchen going, wait for the first bite. Mmm. Mmm. Everything from the, the all that, the, I can taste that blue cheese. Yeah. And the cheese sauce, mm -hmm. that is an amazing little surprising little flavor. That is fabulous. Oh my gosh. This is so fantastic, Mark and Elliot. Thank you so much for shopping at the farmer's market, for bringing this amazing, adaptable, fresh, healthful meal that anyone can enjoy, no matter what their budget, and no matter what season. So. I hope everyone enjoyed looking at this as much as I'm enjoying eating it. And I hope uh, you'll do plan to join us again on our next Cooking with the Farmer's Market. Okay, let's finish. All right, okay. thanks. thanks.